good morning everyone the sun is shining gloriously and it is in the 60s and no sooner did I come in the house get in the shower get dressed and looked outside and the sun was gone and the rain had started again so yes we're back to a cloudy day but that sunrise was beautiful so I praise the Lord for that and I hope everybody has a wonderful day I hope you will want to stick around for a little bit of mine and I'll talk to all of you in just a little while well today I decided that I was going to make a spice cake with maple frosting and this particular recipe is not gluten-free it's not sugar-free it's not dairy-free it's just a regular spice cake but what I'm going to do because it calls for you to grease two round cake pans is I'm actually only going to I'm gonna freeze one is basically what I wanted to say and so I'm just going to frost for half of the cake because I thought that if I had it in the freezer, one in the freezer, then hey, you know, we don't need an entire two layer cake between my husband and I. What can I say? Just figured that was a good idea. But anyways, I'll read you the recipe. It takes two cups of flour, two tablespoons of cornstarch, a tablespoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of cinnamon, a tablespoon of ginger, a tablespoon of allspice, or I'm sorry, a teaspoon of allspice, and a teaspoon of nutmeg. One cup or two sticks of butter that's been softened, and two cups of packed brown sugar, three eggs, tablespoon of vanilla extract, and a cup of milk. And if that sounds like a lot of spices, well, hey, it's spice cake. So anyways, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so I have greased my pans I set those aside. And in these two bowls, I have all of my spices and my cornstarch and my salt and all that good stuff. In here, I have my two cups of brown sugar. And what we're gonna do now is add our two sticks of butter and we are gonna mix this up until it is nice and creamy. Forgot to tell you that we are to take our flour along with our cornstarch and our baking powder and the salt and put it all together and with our spices and we are to mix that together and just set it aside and yeah kind of forgot to do that but there it is it's done now so that's good and now that we have our mixture here of brown sugar butter all creamy what we're going to do is we are going to add one egg at a time and we're going to be beat that in and then we're going to put in our vanilla so we'll go ahead and we'll do that and we're just to beat this until it's nice and fluffy so now what we're going to do since it's nice and fluffy is we are going to alternate putting in some flour along with our cup of milk And we're just going to keep doing this until we've incorporated all of it. So I will just keep it, go ahead and doing this and I'll bring you back when I've got this part all done. Okay, well we are ready to take this out of our pan and, or out of the bowl and put it in the pan. And this is to go into a 350 degree oven for, let me see, how long did it say? 30 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick is inserted in. And then when you take it out, you are to wait for them to cool 10 minutes before removing them from the pan. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and divide up this dough here between these two pans. And then I'll stick it in the oven and we'll see just how wonderful this is going to turn out. I don't know if you like um, spice cake, but I adore spice cake. I just think that it is really yummy. And I'm sorry that you're not really seeing what I'm doing. This is actually quite a thick dough. And so I'm just going to spread it around a bit and get that in that oven and Hey, we're gonna have some delicious spice cake. And I have a recipe for frosting that takes um, powdered sugar and maple syrup and, oh, and butter. And it's gonna be wonderful. So, I'll see you in just a bit. Now this is a very simple recipe because all we're going to do is put in our butter and our maple syrup and our vanilla and we're going to beat that till it's fluffy and then we're going to gradually add in our confectionery sugar. So since I'm cutting mine in half, I'm only going to put in a half a tablespoon and we will get this mixed up and boy does my kitchen smell wonderful. Yeah. Those are rising really nice. I was a little concerned because I was thinking, is this supposed to be this thick? But yeah, it seems like it's cooking up really well. Oh, I'm gonna have to scoop this out. There we go. Don't want to waste any of that good stuff. So we're just gonna whip this up getting it nice and fluffy, and then I will start adding our confectionery sugar. So now I'm just going to add a little bit, I think I need to turn this down, and it says to make sure that in between adding, it's thoroughly incorporated before you add more. But anyways, I'm going to keep doing this, and I will bring you back when I'm done, and yeah, we really need to fix this problem with these overhead lights because that's where my difficulty is, is when there's no sun outside and I have to have my kitchen lights on that it's hard for me to be able to have the lighting right so it's just dark and you're not having a problem seeing or you've got these two great big lights in your face and yeah, can't really see anything. So anyways, I'll bring you back when that's ready. For today's devotion, we will be reading from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. One of the greatest aspects of the Christian faith is that God himself, in all his holiness and love, would dwell in the heart of mankind. You and I have been brought into union with God by the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing can separate us from him. He is closer than our breath. He is more real than the ground beneath our feet. This truth found throughout the New Testament as written in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, which says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Romans 6, 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. 
and in Colossians 1.27 that says, To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is never a single moment that you are apart from God. God is in you and with you and through every trial, success, victory, and even defeat. He is for you and is available 24 hours a day, every day. Even in our sin, God remains. Even when we rebel, God dwells in us. What's left for us to do is to learn to allow this union to permeate every area of our life and to learn to cast aside that which belongs to our former self and live out our new identity as united with Christ himself. If we're going to truly center our lives around Christ in us, we must learn to acknowledge the fact that he's already in us. He came into us when you asked him and were born again as a child of God into his family. He's not a distant God who has to travel from his throne in heaven down to us whenever we need to make time for him. He's not a God who dwells only in churches or in fellowships or in ministries or within clergy. He's a God who dwells in you. And he loves you and he longs to be with you and in constant communion with you. So take time today and renew your mind to the truth that Christ is in you, that you might walk in newness of life, as Romans 6, 4 tells us. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And we often think, that when we feel lonely or we have experienced rejection or guilt, that these are truths. But truth is not found in emotions. It's found in the Word of God. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.